Welcome back to another episode of Down at Maui 101. In this episode, we're going to learn all about multi triggers. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Don at Maui 101. I'm your host, Gerald, and in this episode, we're going to talk about multi triggers. Now, in Don at Maui, triggers is a concept. In other videos, we've already talked about property triggers, which allow you to um, set the appearance or um, even if a button or something is enabled based on a certain property value of that same control, a data trigger with which you can kind of do the same, but now with data binding involved, we've seen event triggers where you can um, trigger a bit of logic depending on, um, you know, which event is triggered on a control. It sounds all a bit cryptic. That's, that's kind of hard about this topic. So I recommend that you watch all the other videos as well to get a good understanding of what the triggers is and how you can use this in your own application. In this episode, we're going to look at multi triggers, which has multiple conditions as the name already implies, which all have to evaluate to true. So each condition has to be true. So it's really an and evaluation and not a or or something else. Um, they really have to evaluate all to true. And then the setters on this trigger will be actually um, executed. So let's just dive into Visual Studio and have a look. Here in Visual Studio, I created a new .NET Maui project, which you can see right here. I stuck to the new .NET Maui project template as much as possible. So you can easily spot differences of what I've been doing here, but I did already implement the multi trigger, which you can see here on this button. So um, on the button, you can just say button dot triggers. It can also apply to a label or any control basically that you can um, come up with here. And then we have this multi trigger and we have to specify the target button. So this has to correspond with the button right here, just so that it knows um, what properties and what not to look for in the property condition, for instance. And then with the multi trigger, you can have multiple conditions, which is basically an endless list of conditions that all have to evaluate to true for the setters here to be evaluated, right? So um, this binding condition is a data binding one. And in this case, I'm binding to a another entry. So another control, my entry, which is a little bit above here. So I created this entry, which was a label before. Uh, I named that my entry. So that's what it's pointing to. And it has the initial text of hello world. But in my case, I want to see uh, this binding and I set the binding to my entry and I look at the uh, my entry dot text, right? At the text property. And I'm going to see if the value is Gerald. So right now it evaluates to false because it's hello world. But as I start typing, whenever it hits Gerald, then this one evaluates to true. So now that one is true. All right. So that's going to happen. The property condition is a property on this same control on the button control. And we're now looking at the property. So I'm looking at the property text and I'm looking at the value clicked five times because in the default.net Maui project, uh, whenever we go to the code behind, you can see this uh, on counter clicked and we're going to click a couple of times. And whenever we hit five, we're going to have this text on that button. And then also this is going to evaluate to true. So only when both of these evaluate to true, this setter is triggered and that's going to be is enabled false. So now the button is going to be disabled and uh, we cannot do any action anymore. Now, of course, it's not really great to evaluate on a text right here. This is just for the um, example code right here, um, but you might want to do something if you're doing form validation, check in your view model if a certain uh, value is uh, according to your conditions and whenever it's not or whatever it is, then you can do this multi trigger and enable or disable that button. So if I now start running this on a uh, Windows machine, of course, this also runs on Android, iOS, Tizen, all the platforms that are supported by .NET MAUI. Um, then we will see our application coming up. And um, then we have to do the two things. I have to type in Gerald and I have to click the button five times and then our button will disable. But when I then start editing the text again and uh, remove Gerald again, then it will re enable, right? So here we can see hello world and I can click five times. One, two, three, four, five. You can see it says five, but it's still enabled, right? And if I now click it again, I'm, I'm falling into my own trap. I shouldn't do that because then uh, it, it won't, it will never uh, disable basically. But if I start typing Gerald here, then boom, now it's disabled, right? And whenever I go out of here, you can see it re enables. So this without having to do any extra code without having to do tight coupling with your controls, you can now use these multi triggers to implement all kinds of crazy stuff, one of which is definitely form validation.
And now you've learned another thing that you can do with .NET MAUI that you probably didn't know about. Did you? Let me know down in the comments. If you're looking for more fundamentals of .NET MAUI that you can learn in a couple of minutes, check out this .NET MAUI 101 playlist right here. See you for the next one.